Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green, and joining me today is Stefan Wick. Hey, Stefan. Hello. Thanks for coming on. My pleasure. Stefan's a program manager in Windows land, as I like to call it. Uh, yep, that's correct. Working on the desktop bridge, which is what we're going to talk about today. And the desktop bridge, uh, which is originally um, codenamed known as Project Centennial, uh, which is still how a lot of us refer to it internally, to keep it straight, um, is the ability to take a Win32 app and take advantage of UWP as a platform and also the Windows Store. Yeah, that's correct. So uh, thanks for the introduction. So I'm specifically working on the UWP app model team in Windows. And with the anniversary update this year, we've uh, released the desktop bridge, which is a set of improvements in the Windows platform to uh, really help uh, all our developers who have existing uh, investments in desktop technologies. Mm -hmm. And it helps them uh, move their code forward into the universal Windows platform. Um, and it helps them migrate their code gradually at their own pace. So uh, we are not asking you to rewrite. We'll basically give you more options. We're uh, giving, uh, giving you a door. Uh, that's open to add more features and functionality while you still maintain the existing code base, mm -hmm. have all the same functionality that you've had for years, and you can continue to service your existing customers on older version of Windows as well with the same code base. Right. I, th I think that's a great point. It's, it's an option that you can use. You may decide to go 100% UWP, write only to the platform, write a, a full-blown uh, UWP app. You may decide not to do that at all, you now have a bridge, an option of taking advantage of, of the UWP without necessarily having to completely rewrite the app. Yeah, that's correct. And actually, by doing the conversion as a first step on the bridge, uh, you don't have to write any code. So we have tooling uh, that supports you in the conversion process. And once you are converted, you immediately get a lot of the benefits that the Universal Windows Platform provides, such as uh, the modern deployment stack that allows uh, easy install, uninstall. Uh, it solves the problem of DLL hell and WinRot on the user's machine. Mm -hmm. And it gives you uh, automatic silent updates and allows your app to be distributed with, uh, via the Windows Store or other distribution mechanisms of your choice. Right. So the Windows Store, both the public store and the business store. Right? Uh, that's correct. So for okay. now, it's in this release, it's the, it's the public store. OK. OK. Cool. All right. Uh, yeah, let me show you a um, couple of demos to kind of uh, see how this works in practice in Visual Studio uh, with a couple of examples. Um, so uh, kind of to introduce or uh, frame the demos here, uh, the enhancements that we've made in the uh, in the platform are basically in two buckets. One is the installment and deployment benefits that you get uh, right out of the box once you have done the conversion. Mm -hmm. And then the second bucket of enhancements are in the runtime. Now, when your app is converted, you actually have uh, the full power of UWP available uh, in your development environment. So you can make more API calls, you can use all the features that UWP provides that you previously couldn't call from your MFC application or from mm -hmm. your VB6 application. Okay. And um, we kind of see the migration uh, process in uh, five steps. Uh, in the first steps, you, in the first step you do the conversion, uh, you run either our conversion tool or there are uh, already third-party uh, uh, conversion uh, tools out there that help with your specific uh, installer technology that you are using today. And with the conversion, you already get uh, all of the deployment benefits. And uh, from there on now, you can call UWP APIs from your desktop process. Mm -hmm. Actually, you were able to do that before the bridge, but uh, only a small subset of APIs was available. Now, once you're on the bridge, a much larger subset is supported, and uh, you can get a lot more value out of that. And then from there, you can continue to extend uh, your application. Not only can you call APIs, but you can also uh, leverage other uh, UWP features, such as background tasks, app services, Cortana integration. You can add modern UI pieces to your 
uh, desktop application and so on and so forth. You get live tiles integration with the yes, with the applications. Yeah. Exactly, live okay. tile. That would actually be an example for kind of the first step uh, in enhance. Okay. Uh, you can make those call and and get the live tiles. Right. And then you can continue the migration and actually move more and more of your code into the UWP app process. For example, you could think about replacing your old uh, school UI with a modern XAML UI, but still keep some code around in your desktop process because you haven't done all the work to make all the legacy code UWP compliant. So mm -hmm. you can keep that around and, as I said, migrate at your own pace. Uh, as you see fit for your particular project. And then at the final step, once you've actually migrated all your code into the UWP app container, now your app is a pure UWP and you can deploy to any uh, Windows 10 device. You can go to HoloLens, Xbox, Windows right. Phone, and so on and so forth. Okay. Let me switch over to uh, Visual Studio here and uh, show you an example. So if you look at the uh, Solution Explorer here, um, do I need to extend this? I probably just need to duplicate instead of extending. Yeah. PowerPoint loves to extend. There we go. OK. So in the Solution Explorer here, uh, we see I have a traditional desktop app. Uh, in my case, it's a WPF app. Uh, that I choose here, uh, but uh, the same applies to any uh, classic uh, Win Windows application. It could be a WinForms app, it could be a C++ Win32 app. Uh, we've e we're even seeing some VB6 apps coming across the bridge. Mm -hmm. We're seeing Delphi apps, uh, Electron apps. So all, all of these apps are, are supported. Uh, in my case, I'm using WPF here, and so let me just launch the app normally first uh, to kind of show you uh, what it is. It's, it's a very simple WPF app that has a couple of image elements that I'm using to monitor a couple of webcams around campus so I can see, you know, before I go home, hey, what's, uh, what's the traffic situation? We should do a contest to see who will convert the oldest app. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, would be, that would be an interesting one, yeah. We should do that. I've, for another demo, I've converted an MS-DOS, uh, uh, like ASCII-based game. So uh -huh. that was probably a pretty old one. Let's cool. see if someone can <laughs> top it. Um, so this is how, how the app looks in, in, in the plain WPF world. Uh, nothing, uh, nothing super special here. Now I want to convert it to UWP and take advantage of, of new features in the anniversary update. So what I want to do here is uh, I've added a UWP packaging project to my solution. What this does for me is basically it takes the output of my uh, build process in Visual Studio and uh, puts it in a layout that Visual Studio can then create an Apex package from mm -hmm. and uh, provide it with an appropriate UWP manifest and then it can be deployed just like any UWP and I have automatically all the deployment benefits without you know, writing any code. Um, this uh, packaging project, uh, we call out, we are currently uh, shipping as an extension. Um, so if you go to the marketplace, uh, Visual Studio Marketplace, uh, you will find it here. There is the desktop to UWP packaging project just released an update yesterday with some bug fixes. Uh, you you want to install that and then you uh, can uh, follow the same in Visual Studio for your project. Now, uh, let me deploy this on my machine and see. So did you have to do any configuration at this point? Yeah, there is a little bit of configuration. You basically uh, author uh, this package file list which basically tells Visual Studio what are all the pieces of my build output that I need to, to have in my package. So those are typically your, uh, your EXEs and DLLs that you produce. Okay. You have to build that by hand? Or? Yeah, this is currently uh, something you build by hand. Okay. Yeah. Um, so now I've deployed my app. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah. So it's in the app list. Now it's a UWP, so it gets deployed to the app list by default. And uh, I 
uh, you know, compare it to start, uh, I can uh, resize my tile, and I, I can supply it, you know, with nice tile assets uh, if, if I want. And so all these benefits I get automatically. I can uninstall it right from here, mm -hmm. uh, just like UWPs, and it's a complete uh, um, uh, clean install. It's guaranteed to be clean uh, all the time. Right. Um, so let's do this again, because we actually want to run it. Um, so here we are. Uh, I can launch it from the tile. And so it's the same app still, of course. I haven't okay. changed any code. I haven't added right. any functionality. So at this point, you've got the benefit of it being deployable, installable, and uninstallable in a much easier fashion. Exactly, exactly. Right, avoiding, as you said, the DLL hell and, and rot and whatnot. So you, you're just, you haven't, like you said, you haven't touched the code. You haven't had to change the app. It's still the exact same app. You just have a much easier install, uninstall process. Yeah, that's okay. correct. Also, uh, as you so see, even if you do nothing more than that, it's kind of interesting. It's already you know a great benefit. Yeah. And you know the same app can still uh, run on Windows Seven, obviously, Absolutely. right? You're not. Right. Um, you haven't touched the exit. Ex excluding that, right. uh, the binary is still the same. Uh, now, cool. uh, with this packaging project, I can now create an AppX uh, package from from my my app, and I've done it here. And so with this guy. You now have an installer. You know you can distribute this thing uh, in in your uh, you know in your enterprise or with your friends, or you can actually put it into the Windows Store and deploy it from there. So uh, that's another uh, great benefit you get. You know with just very few steps okay. out of that. So you double clicked on that AppX and you got a UI. Used yep. to be you had to use a PowerShell script. Correct. When yep. did that change? That's another. Uh, new there, there are certain questions I'm embarrassed to answer because it's probably like three years ago. Uh, <laughs> no, actually, this is another new feature that uh, we've released with the anniversary. Okay, update. good. So, uh, right. so that is brand new too. Okay. Cool. So going back to the project, and uh, now I actually want to uh, add some new functionality. Um, so. Uh, I want to call UWP APIs. If you recall on the slide, that was kind of the first step after mm -hmm. conversion. You can now uh, call additional UWP APIs. And uh, for that to do, you just need to add a couple of references uh, to your project. Uh, this can be a little bit tedious. Uh, so we've provided a, a, a NuGet package that you can uh, install. Nice. It will set up your, uh, your Visual Studio project uh, just right for, uh, for calling UWP APIs. It also provides a little bit of syntax checking, uh, which can be handy because there are some APIs that are not supported to be called directly from uh, a desktop process and some that are. And so the syntax checking helps you, um, you know, avoid some of those mistakes. And so I've already added that NuGet package here, uh, so now I and can. What did it add? Show me the reference. Um, it added um, all the you know Windows uh, namespaces okay. for the ah, okay. uh, for the UWP APIs, and it also yeah. added uh, these um, okay. helper assemblies that uh, uh, allow you to do like the async mm -hmm. patterns and and things okay. like that. So I'm gonna. Maybe jump ahead in the question. You can answer it later. You've got a reference to systemruntime.ui.xaml. Does that mean that I can have inside a project XAML files, WPF XAML files, and UWP XAML files existing in the same project? Uh, so that's a great question. So uh, you can have, um, from a converted desktop application, you can add UWP components that host XAML UI, and I will actually show that okay. in my demo in, in a few minutes. Uh, what is not supported is uh, loading XAML controls, like a UWP XAML controls into a Win32 process okay. directly. So that is not supported, but you can add a UWP component to your package, activate that package, and run UWP controls in that. Okay. And I'll, I'll yeah, have that demo in okay. a second. So um, before I go to uh, get to that demo, uh, one thing I've, I've added here in terms of UWP API calls is 
uh, I'm using the toast notification APIs mm -hmm. um, as well as the uh, as the tile uh, live tile APIs uh, to kind of make my WPF app a little more engaging uh, to keep my user more up to date and uh, also to provide info uh, when the user is not running my application right. and, and keep them engaged. So uh, let's see how that looks. Um, let me resize this again. And so now if I select one of these uh, uh, webcams, you know, I, I, get, I get a toast notification here with the current state of the webcam. And I can actually uh, continue to get those periodically even uh, when my application is not running. And uh, so actually, let's close it. And, um, I've also updated the tile, so uh, hopefully that kicks in in the uh, in the next uh, few seconds on the, uh, on the next cycle, um, uh, which should give me uh, the yeah, current so state of my. There we uh, go. Cool. So that's so again another incremental, nice step. Uh, again, exact same map, but you're you're taking advantage of the UI, live tile notifications, a lot of this cool stuff that. Uh, you don't necessarily or may not be able to completely rewrite the app as UWP to take advantage of, but now you just put these things into your existing app. Exactly. That's and cool. you have much better user engagement yeah. now. Uh, you, know, you can periodically pop up toasts and uh, kind of provide new information mm -hmm. to your user and also bring them back into, into your app. Right. Um, so I mentioned, you know, we're not only enabling you to call additional APIs, you can actually uh, use all the features and functionality in UWP now from your uh, desktop application. Another example here that I want to point out is uh, background tasks. So uh, I've registered a background task here uh, from my application. And uh, I want to point out, and this is important, that I'm wrapping this uh, call into a check to see if I'm actually running as a UWP currently. Mm. Because I want the same code to mm -hmm. still be able to run on Windows 8, on Windows 7, and you know, whatever uh, uh, versions I support in my application. So I'm, I make this check here. So only if I'm actually converted, uh, I register the background task. Otherwise, this would fail. Cool. And uh, so what I'm doing here uh, to register the background task, I'm using the, the UWP APIs for that. And I'm defining an entry point uh, that implements the code that can now run whenever this trigger fires. In this case, it's a 15 second time trigger. And so even if my app is not running, mm -hmm. this code uh, will run and can provide value to the user. Um, so I've implemented the code here uh, in this project. You see, it's a universal uh, Windows project, uh, and it's a, it's a very simple class that just implements the run method to uh, fire up another toast every 15 seconds. So okay. you know the user keeps uh, keeps engaged, and uh, yeah. So this component is another one that uh, you know I'm listing here in my packaging project, uh, so it gets packaged with my Apex and deployed. Everything gets deployed together, gets serviced together. It's one unit of application. So are there tools being worked on to automate this process? Yeah, there are things on the roadmap. Uh, no, not many details to share at, uh, okay. at this point in time, but uh, this is definitely an, an area for improvement. OK. Um, is there documentation of the types of things you should be looking for and knowing that that component one of them is in a WMD, one of them is in an XE. How do you know? Yeah, yeah. So there is documentation okay. on MSDN okay. on, on how to use this new extension. Got it. Um, so if we look at the components here, uh, I've added background task, but I have another thing here uh, that I called map UI. And this is actually a UWP uh, UI component that I'm adding here. And this goes back to your earlier question about you know, hosting uh, modern XAM UWP XAML controls in your um, in your desktop app package, and so this is exactly what I want to do here. And uh, so let me uh, launch my app again, 
And so I've added these little map buttons uh, to, to the webcams. And so what, what this does is it uh, pops up a, a, a XAML UI component. Okay. Uh, and this is hosting the, you know, the, the latest map control that, that we have in, in UWP. And I can take advantage of uh, all the features there. And I can check out, hey, what's the situation on the bridges right now? Uh, which way should I take? And mm -hmm. uh, then I can switch over to my other webcam and, and so on and so, so forth. So it has to launch as a, in a separate window? Yes, it launches okay. in a separate window. Yeah. Uh, this is running in the UWP app container. Uh, whereas my WPF app right. still runs as okay. a regular desktop. So we're process. not quite at the point where you can have within the app some pages written in WPF, some pages written in UWP XAML running kind of side by side inside the app. We don't have that. Correct. Those, those are separate windows. Okay. Yeah. They're all in the same app package. Yep. Uh, they are you know, deployed together and serviced together. Uh, but uh, those different UI technologies will run in, in different ways. Got it. Okay. Um, yeah. So that's how how you add the um, you know another UWP component to to your package. Um, as you can see, we can activate it. Uh, we can also communicate back and forth. So there's a communication channel uh, that we provide so that uh, all parts of your application can communicate together. Uh, you can also add app services uh, to your uh, desktop application that then can provide services to other apps on the system. Mm -hmm. And uh, literally, you know, you can you can use any UWP feature now in your uh, desktop application package. Very cool. So, so that's uh, pretty much the demo. Um, now a uh, there's a lot of documentation out there uh, on AKAMS uh, Desktop Bridge. Um, definitely recommend uh, going there, uh, checking out all the tools, uh, all the documentation. Uh, there's pointers to samples mm -hmm. uh, as well, uh, if you want to start with those. And we uh, are continuously updating those samples, adding more uh, examples, not only for WPF or .NET apps. We're also adding some more C++ samples. And, and other technologies as well. Can you, do, uh, can you give us a couple of examples of, of people who are doing this and what experiences they've had? Yeah, so we've just started uh, onboarding uh, uh, the first set of customers to, to the Windows Store. Um, Evernote uh, was one, one of the examples. Uh, Cody is, is another one. Uh, so for them, it's really a great option uh, to kind of bring forward uh, their existing versions of, of the app. Yeah, Evernote's interesting because I, I actually first learned about them because they had a Windows 8 app. I, yeah. I didn't actually know they had a Win32 app. Uh, they had a Win8 app, so I said, oh, that looks interesting. Downloaded that, started using it. But it turns out that they have a Win32 app as well. Right? Yeah. So how did how do they decide what to do with their uh, UWP app and their Win32 app? Yeah. I mean, obviously, everyone's situation uh, may be different, but uh, having a UWP app is a great choice uh, for you if you want to target uh, 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 Windows Phone and uh, and desktop mm -hmm. and maybe Hololens and Xbox as well, and uh, and you know that opens up uh, with that choice. If you have an existing code base on desktop that you've built uh, over years, you know, which is very rich in functionality and takes advantage of unique desktop capabilities, mm -hmm. uh, you want to keep that around as well because you may have users on desktop who depend on some of those specific right. functionalities. Okay. So they would then just offer up both versions of the app and if you're currently using the Win32 version, you now gain some of the features we've talked about, the integration with the UWP, the much better install model, the fact that you can go to the store and get it. If you, uh, you might install both because potentially the UWP version is a more lightweight version, um, might have some different UI, probably probably works a little bit better with touch, right? There. Yeah, that's correct. I mean, it's, uh, it's up to you as the app publisher right. uh, to decide how you know which app you want to uh, deploy to to what customer group. Mm -hmm. uh, in in the case of Evernote, they're actually defaulting to uh, to the Win32 app right now for uh, for 
users on the Windows 10 anniversary okay. um, uh, update, uh, but other apps are, are making different choices in terms of what they offer uh, to, uh, to their customers. Right. But it gives you the options of deciding what you want to exactly. do, of taking yeah. advantage of the platform without necessarily having to completely rewrite. I think that's, that's the, key, the key benefit of this. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So yeah, we want to make sure you can uh, keep your existing investments and, you know, and move forward mm -hmm. uh, and you know, leverage you know, your existing customer base and, and your uh, existing functionality as much right. as possible. That's awesome. Thanks so much. All right, you're welcome. All right, hope you enjoyed that. Great stuff to play around with. It looks fairly easy to, to get started with and, and to use. Yep. All right, cool. We'll see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox.